Welcome back to the theme component of the Trigun Retrospective. For this episode, I'd like to talk about a theme which I feel is present throughout the entire series, and of course manifests in every character within the series. And that theme is the theme of Grid. You see, when I first started typing ideas for the theme component of this series, I had many ideas which kind of overlapped each other. These were things as sticking to one's ideals, always moving forward, never stopping, never giving up, making one's own path, living by one's own ideas, etc. And then I realized these were all just manifestations of the same central idea. That idea, of course, is having grit. Now, when I say grit, I mean something which harkens back to the older Westerns. And what grit means is the ability to stand by what one says and live by what one believes. The ability to move forward in these two things, regardless of the circumstances of life. One may be bogged down for a bit, but they will never completely abandon these if they have true grit. They will always try to live by their own word, or at least most of it, and will always try to be some version of themselves. They will be themselves at their core, and although they may change and grow over time, these will simply be extensions of the self instead of selling out or being a completely different person. That is what I mean when I say grit. I mean having a true value on yourself as an individual, and embracing yourself, and not letting go of that, even if it means that life may not be the easiest sometimes. Even if it means that you're going to have to push forward through some tough things. You're going to be able to do it, and you're going to get through. You're going to be able to bear that weight because of your grit. That's what I mean when I say grit. Now, all the main characters, of course, have this, and we'll start with by examining the insurance girls. Now, on a literal level, they do have a good amount of grit. They're obviously very good shots, and they obviously do very difficult work, and they have the endurance, patience, and strength of mind to be able to carry out their work, which is not always easy, thankful, or safe. Now, they also have internal levels of grit, too. They have levels of grit which may not manifest themselves on the surface so readily, and of course, I'm talking about the emotional strengths and development that I've mentioned earlier. Now, Meryl doesn't have this grit necessarily, as she tries to push herself around and tell herself how she will feel about certain things, but she later develops it, and she doesn't stop moving forward. Even though she has breaks mentally and physically from time to time, she never stops, and exhibits the kind of determination and pervasive efforts needed to become one with grit. Now, Millie, of course, already has this. As mentioned earlier, she's both incredibly physically strong and incredibly emotionally and mentally strong. And this is why she's considered grittier, because she is someone who values herself, and trusts herself, and lives by her own words. For this reason, she's a true ideal of what the Western seeks to uphold. And the Western seeks to uphold someone who, once again, can live by their own words and ideals, and be a best version of themselves. Someone who, while able to work in a group, is always equipped and able to be on their own too, because they know that they themselves are able to trust themselves to get through difficult situations. They have the strength of mind, to be able to do so, to adapt and survive. And this ability to adapt leads us to Wolfwood, who is a very adaptable man, and is shown throughout the series to be a man of great grit. Now, while he lacks integrity to some extent because of how some of his actions violate his priestly morals, he is still a man with some integrity as he is acutely self-aware of this, and he's also aware of the fact that he needs to take action sometimes. And while he struggles balancing between these two things, he ultimately tries to live by his ideals and even redeems himself in the end when he refuses to kill Chapel. This is a man who's obviously been through a lot and continued to go through a lot, and he never gave up. He may have passed, but it wasn't because he gave up. He never stopped trying to be a version of himself that he wanted to be, and even if he didn't accomplish that until the very end, he was still a man of great effort, of great trying, a man with great strength. And finally, this leads us to Vash, the Stampede himself, who was the ultimate embodiment of grit. Now this proves that to have grit, someone does not necessarily have to be mean or rude, or even use their power too flamboyantly. They simply need to be able to rely on themselves and use it when necessary to defend and promote what they want. And this is what Vash stands for to a T. This is a man who, while having great power, uses it very restrainingly. However, when he does decide to use it, he makes sure that it's only to live by his own words. He never compromises what he believes, and he never tries to rope others in to solve his problems. He understands that his problems are his to solve, and that it's up to him. He's a man of great integrity and strength, and while he doesn't always harness his strength efficiently, or at all from time to time, he does use it all of the time to maintain his own ideals and to live by what he wants to do. He's aware that life is lonely sometimes, and that he's used to being able to operate under these conditions. He's able to get himself through situations and get by in life. He is able to hold his own. He is able to be a version of himself that he wants to be most of the time, and for this reason he is a man of true grit. This is how he likens back to the cowboy of the old western. Like in the old western, Vash is a drifter, but also a man of strong convictions. He knows that 
while the world is tough, he's only got himself. So, he better learn how to rely on himself. He better learn how to get by. And like the heroes of the Old West, he suffers in some battles, he has some bruises, and he sure gets beaten down sometimes. But he always keeps going, and he never stops. He gets right back on the metaphorical horse, and he never lets it leave. Sure, he gets disheartened from time to time, but he always finds his way back to the right path. Or if he doesn't, someone else helps him there. Someone who he's helped. This is what it means to be truly gritty. It doesn't mean necessarily conquering or forcing others to do your will. No. If anything, it involves conquering yourself so that you can live by what you believe and be the version of you that you want to be. To have grit is to have integrity, and to have integrity is to live by your own words and ideals. So let's dissect this. Like the Westerns of old, Trigun speaks to the strength of the individual, a strength that is present even when people may find themselves in situations which are not the best regardless of their own efforts and actions. Like in the old Westerns, there's a sense of rugged challenge of conquering, not only conquering adversity, but also conquering oneself. You see, one of the most emphasized character traits in many old westerns is a subtle sense of self-control, of stability and integrity, if you will. And that is present in Trigun as well. Not only must the cast overcome the tough exterior circumstances they find themselves in, but also overcome themselves, or at least maintain enough self-control to get by. It is an exercise in the art of self-control and endurance, and all of them pass this exercise. Sure, they all struggle with it from time to time, and may even break down for a bit, but none of them give up, at least for long and none of them stop moving forward, and they never lose who they are in the process. The point here is that all the characters are manifest a sort of internal integrity, so treasured not only in Trigun, but in the Westerns of old as well. It is this integrity which all these people promote for us to emulate, the ideal of sticking to one's ideals, and never selling out. It is a tough connective tissue which binds them thematically on a deeper level than just appearances. It is an admiration of the strength of the human spirit and the endurance of the soul. And that is one of the reasons I find Trigun so beautiful. Because while yes, fascist powers are impressive and the fights are cool, the true strength on display is strength of character and spirit. It is this strength which is truly compelling, as it inspires us to tap into our own inner strength, and it tells us that yes, life sucks sometimes, and yes, there will be rough patches, but also, yes, we will be able to do it. We will make it through it.